These two grown men have never seen The Simpsons How the fuck's that even happen? The two grown men on a mission now So buckle up and just strap in And I said, ooh, I'm drowning in the night Oh, when I'm like this, you're the one I trust Hey, hey These two grown men have never seen The Simpsons It's America's Barley Basket Welcome everyone to episode 33 of America's Barley Basket. I'm your host Marlon Wells alongside host Nathan Volsabach. Hello Nathan. Hello Marlon. How are ya? Ah, you know, <laughs> it's, you know, people, they, you know, as wildly successful as the podcast is, they probably assume we don't have day jobs, but, uh. We do, or mm. I do. I shouldn't speak you for do. you. I don't know what you're up to in the dark, in your the <laughs> the moist depths of your apartment. I mean, mm-hmm. But I am working, and I had to work at 5 a.m. today. And if anyone knows me, that is usually when I go to Betty Bye. That's not what I'm mm-hmm. supposed to wake up. So I am, I am uh, to quote Jackson Brown, running on empty. <laughs> 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 All of my podcast training comes. N- comes out right now can i do it do i have the stamina to keep pushing when my body's <laughs> screaming no i think i do marlon i think you do i think you got uh much like much like stand up when you get like stage adrenaline i think you will have podcast endorphins coursing and yeah, surging feel it. Yeah. through your body i i'm going to say that i don't know if i could promise uh 2 weeks there on another big 3 hour beefy boy i don't know if i got a beefy boy in me you know we'll never say never uh, you never know you know i get all all worked up and full of beans i might get another one out but <laughs> i don't know if the if the, the listeners are ready for another 3 hours. I don't know if they could handle that kind of girth. <laughs> they were, they were resistant. They were pushing back. Were they? I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I didn't receive any uh, any hate mail or anything on on I, us finally breaking the three hour mark last I was, week. I heard many a protest that it's not going to fit. Three hours is not going to fit. <laughs> and I said, "God damn it, it'll fit. We'll make it fit." Mm-hmm. And, and I think the downloads proved. Get it in your ears. Yeah, get that in your ear holes. Yeah, that uh, that was a monster last week. We really uh... old fashioned Dakota Thicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dakota Ficky needs to be a masked wrestler on the Upper Midwest Barely Pro Wrestling Circuit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wrestling at a county fair somewhere. Yeah. Dakota Ficky. You can't do superplexes or your heels will hit the ceiling of the armory that you're in. <laughs> I've been to wrestling shows like that where it's like, okay, don't come off the top rope too hot because you'll hit these rafters in this in this machine shed. You got to do a lot of middle rope work. <laughs> yep. A lot of just falling elbow drops from the middle <laughs> rope. Crouching elbow drops. <laughs> the Bret Hart elbow drop. Yeah. Yep. Oh, we my God. We can't all be Randy Macho Man Savages at the, when we're at this level. <laughs> no, not seeing a lot of moonsaults at those shows. I was. I know this isn't a wrestling podcast, but we got to be coming up on Royal Rumble <laughs> season, right? Next week, baby. Ooh, I, like, I can ignore wrestling, but I always like catching the Royal Rumble. I'm the same way uh, when it comes to the, the WWE product. I ignore a lot of it, but come come Royal Rumble season, I'm always like, well, I should probably watch that. It's yeah. f- I just like the concept. It's fun. Mm-hmm. and it, yeah, It's my favorite of all of their gimmick matches. And I like the idea, like, they usually march out a couple old timers that, yeah. you know, have a couple laughs with. And, they, you know, they'll throw a few punches and get the crowd on their side. Then they get flung over the top rope. Yeah. I uh, I always really enjoy that show. So uh, I will be uh, watching that next Sunday. I might have to try as well. Yeah, I would recommend it. Fun time to be watching grown men pretend to wrestle. Yep, grown men play fighting in their underwear. <laughs> I love it. It all adds up. <laughs> I am a. I'm taking a page out of your book this week. I am fully bevved. I have got uh, 
not just one, but two beverages in front of me. I have a, a nice hot cup of coffee to get me going in the afternoon mm. and a lime Perrier that I Ooh. am also uh, alternately sipping. Oh, I thought that was like a, that sounded like a mid card, like 70s tennis player. <laughs> lime Perrier. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Can't quite beat Bjorn Borg. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh god headband game on point yeah but, oh, very uh, much so climb very the boards like he needs to thick luxurious sideburns <laughs> tons of unprotected sex the shortest of tennis shorts <laughs> yeah just weird leg hair the kind you shouldn't see <laughs> it's getting too coarse because <laughs> it's uh, reaching the pubis region <laughs> <laughs> a blasphemous amount of pubic hair peeking out from under those shorts you know i uh, how much we used to talk a lot about the nba i remember reading a fun fact that during the 80s when short shorts were what you wore when you played basketball that patrick ewing used to have to tape his horn to the inside of his thigh or his <laughs> prick would just fly out like like just swinging around just dick. <laughs> Yeah, like knocking Bill Lambeer over with his dick if he does a spin in the post. I, because like I'm gonna make assumptions right now about Patrick Ewing. I'd imagine it's an impressive hammer. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think I, I applaud him for taking the safety of his competitors into account. I, I think we can make some assumptions about my horn. I am baffled <laughs> at the idea of having enough dick neck that you could tape it. <laughs> like, that would, I would be in pain if mine was taped. There ain't enough dick neck to play around with. There ain't, a, there ain't enough slack in that rope, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I would be hunched if my dick was taped securely to my thigh. <laughs> I ain't got enough rope to, for those kind of shenanigans. <laughs> Thanks, Lord. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to get the phrase done dick neck worked into <laughs> modern lexicon <laughs> your trip to the bank tomorrow afternoon <laughs> oh. uh, the, uh. most most would say shaft but nathan went with yeah. dick neck because oh, he's man. an artist yeah i just wish i i I wish I had more. I don't even give a shit about my erect unit. I just want more dick neck for the comedic value. Mm -hmm. I want to. No, I, I want a prick you can flop around. You know, <laughs> just like oh man, like it just because a really small dick that just it just reminds people of their own mortality. That's not what anyone <laughs> wants to see. Good time, Charlie doesn't <laughs> breaks out his tiny penis. I was like, oh god damn it! Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're right. We are all going to die. Huh? You start oh, thinking about like the diseases that run in your family. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> start start thinking about the entropy of the universe. Yeah. And the, the heat death of the sun that is yeah. inevitably coming. It's like you give it like 100 years. Literally, no one will ever. No one alive remembered you. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> you just erased. Like, yeah, but a big dick just flopping around like, oh, my God, look at fucking Ronnie. God damn it, Ronnie. Put your prick in your pants. This is a county fair. It's four in the afternoon. But hey, don't change. Don't ever change. We got to really watch it. Like, wait till we're in the beer gardens. Like, Ronnie, there's kids here. Jesus. <laughs> Who can't have a good laugh at that hog? <laughs> Ronnie, we're trying to watch the steer show. What are you doing? <laughs> You are in the 4-H, 4-H Quonset. We cannot have that. Save it for the rodeo, Ronnie. God damn. That is, that is definitely post-rodeo shenanigans. That's what that mm, is. Yeah, dick flopping is, is post-rodeo behavior where I come from, for sure. I have been to three, perhaps four post-rodeo beer drinking type things and at least three of those people tried to pick fights with me little little tiny cowboys 
Yeah, what that is it out. <laughs> about me that makes a cow like you had a bad day at the barrel, the barrel, whatever you do to barrels, <laughs> barrels are involved. Yep. Rope yep. them. They had a bad rope day at the barrel <laughs> roping. Yep. Yeah, it's, it seems like that should be the intro, introductory game because that sounds easy. <laughs> 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 do you jump them like Mario? <laughs> the barrel jumping didn't go so hot. I decided to. Just take a run at me. Well, yeah, like you, you did nail it. It's because they're little and you're not. Mm -hmm. So they feel the need to take it out on you. So many, and, so many short men, Nathan. I yeah. don't know. I don't know how, how familiar you are with literally all of history, but short yeah. men <laughs> are, uh, maybe the, maybe the most, rambunctious when it comes to fisticuffs and, and their willingness to throw them and i it's so funny that like i would love at so many points in my adolescence but even now would love to be in their tiny little wee shoes i'd love to be able to blend <laughs> in the background but i am the size of a fucking rental car so that just doesn't happen <laughs> like, i'd love it wouldn't it be great to just blend in just be normal sized mm -hmm. to just be a a 5'4 cowboy at the county yeah. fair just living his life. Be a good 5'9. I could live with that, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> just be nice yet. <laughs> I wish I could hide easier. <laughs> I struggle with hiding. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it makes it hard for anonymity to be just your bag. Giant head to just... Ruining <laughs> movies and concerts for people. <laughs> Constantly apologizing. I wonder how many people have just cursed my name at concerts because, yeah, I mean, if I am Man, in front of you, it is. fucking guy. Yeah, God this damn it. fucking asshole. Giant fucking waterhead in front of me. Why is he <laughs> allowed outside this time of night? Who let him out of his cage yeah. today? God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Save it for Halloween, you fuck, as they're just yeah. throwing their beer at you. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other townsfolk, they get a posse together and run me back up to the to my fucking creator's castle. <laughs> <laughs> what hath God rot? God rot. <laughs> they, they mob up quick like the Springfield citizens. Uh, ooh, ooh, Marlon, good segue. Sometimes I forget Boom. we discuss The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> we are still we're we are tits deep in season eight right now we're really getting into it starting off with episode nine the mysterious voyage of homer uh starts off uh <laughs> marge uh, some good sight gags marge uh trying to hide the fact that the 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 city's annual chili cook-off is going on like uh, the like how she's smoking like, to cover she's the smell act, yeah yeah to cover it up and she vacuums to cover up the sound of whatever's <laughs> announcing outdoors at the chili cook-off's beginning <laughs> It's Lenny calling Homer to That's see if what he needs is. a ride. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. what? A ride to what? And she yeah. just jams the vacuum into the, the phone line in the wall and knocks it loose. Yeah, it, She's really so going great. for it here. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> but unfortunately for Marge, he does find out and it becomes the whole whole family's going to go to the big chili cook-off because Homer is kind of a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, known for his ability to take heat, apparently. Yeah. Uh, which I wouldn't have called and we've never touched on before. I can see Homer loving chili, but mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have called him being some, some heat master. Yeah. What's your heat tolerance? Uh, I have a pretty high heat tolerance. I really I, like spicy food a lot. In particular, I, like you kind of in my mind, you kind of have two camps of heat. You have like like Mexican heat and Asian heat. You know what I mean? When I think of of hot foods, I think of those two uh, cuisines. I especially love uh, Asian heat, like hot Japanese food <laughs> or or hot ramen. Uh, but I like I love hot food. I'll sit. Like, there's a particular brand of ramen I like that makes uh, some real fucking hot 
ramen and i will sit and just house two bowls of it in my recliner with tears and sweat running down my face having the time of my life that sounds sensual and i am into it (laughs) and on the subject of asian heat i am with you i i love asian heat so much i paid 35 dollars for a dvd titled that in 2003 oh i think that's a different thing (laughs) it's made by (laughs) Are you like, there's no ramen in this at all? (laughs) 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 The the breast augmentation surgeries were done earlier that afternoon. (laughs) 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 Time is money for the good folks at Vivid. God damn it. (laughs) Remember when they used to do voiceover for porn? How much that ruined it? Do you remember that at all? Are you too young for that? Like I don't think I have ever seen like dubbed much. pornography. Oh, dude, it was a pervasive phenomenon in the porn industry in the late 90s, early aughts. Like they would just film because I'm sure, you know, it's tough to dub sound and they're doing all this and someone's fucking, you know backyard fucking storage shed in, in San Bernardino where the traffic is thick. There is a lot of, so they would like, so it would just, you could tell it was just poorly dubbed. It's like, I, man, yeah, that was fucking porn's gotten good. <laughs> that's, yeah. the, that's the bullet point you were really yeah, trying to good, sneak good in Good job, here. everybody. Good job. Keep, I, the, keep uh, it up. I have, uh, I, I'm just envisioning the kind of voiceover work you see in like the martial arts films of the 70s before they really figured that shit out. Yeah, it's man, it wasn't it wasn't laughably bad, but it sure wasn't fucking good. <laughs> and like they'd have music, man, the fucking sounds are just as good as the fucking visuals. If you want to know what gets me in my crank zone all worked up, I need the audio. <laughs> We've like, that's come up here before that yeah, you would I, rather have audio than video mm-hmm. video. And it needs to be stressed. I want people to think about that when they think about me. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. important to me. That's, that's <laughs> your brand. Yes. <laughs> I, on the subject of food heat, not uh, sensual heat, I uh, I think maybe we've discussed this too. I'm at the level where I like like chicken wings, for example. I like hot until it gets to the point they got to – it gets so hot they got to attach extreme adjectives to it. Yeah, you know, the, like, the dick wagging in the hot sauce mm-hmm. industry is kind of insufferable. Yeah. Like, I like hot wings, but I don't need cowabunga wings, you know? Like, I just, once it gets past hot, you know, hot's good. I like hot. I don't need, yeah, anything after that, it's it's too much yeah, for me, for the most part. I don't uh, I don't like a lot of the posturing in that world. It's it's the same as like the same thing happened to like the craft beer world where it's like we have so many hops in here it'll fucking blow your dick off. It's yeah. like all right, how about everyone relaxes a little? Yeah, go. I just yeah, man. I don't I don't need grim reaper colon blow like i don't need that on my hot sauce bottle but like yeah. like hey man does it taste good that's what i'm in it for and like yeah, no shit yeah like, there's pl- there's plenty of hot out there that is just hot and doesn't taste good and that shit sucks like yeah. like i've i'm pretty adventurous when i'm buying hot sauces so i'll like buy a bottle and then you're fucked if you get a bad one because like you paid seven dollars for this bottle and like Oh, this isn't good at all. I've had that just, experience yeah. where it's like, oh, this is like uncomfortably hot and just tastes like a cleaning chemical. I guess <laughs> I could have just set seven dollars on fire instead. Yeah, I could just check out the shit that's underneath the sink in the bathroom that the person before me left. You know, like, exactly. Like this. I can just take a hit of the stove cleaner yeah. that I got in my kitchen <laughs> and get the same result. Yeah, yeah. it's I lo- I love overly hot painfully hot food as long as it tastes good yeah speaking of mind altering substances the reason marge uh doesn't want homer to go to the chili cook-off is because he makes an ass himself because he gets too drunk and he assures her that this time that will not happen he's gonna He's going to mind himself. He's just there for the chili. He's got his eyes on the prize. While we're while we're on this setup here, uh, chili. What is your what is your your thoughts on chili itself? You know what? Regardless of heat, what are your thoughts on chili? 
I am. I don't got no hot chili takes. I enjoy a bowl of chili, but I'm not a guy that's fucking going bonkers over chili. Like, uh, cause I, I don't know. Just like I am with my coffee, I'm pretty basic bitch with chili. I'll load it up with sour cream and cheese to the point that it's like off white. That <laughs> 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 it's technically part of the dairy block on the food pyramid. <laughs> I'm a cheese I, and crackers guy, but I'm not much with sour cream in my chili. Like maybe I a little. Struggle to. I'm trying to think of the, the foods I wouldn't enjoy with sour cream added. <laughs> I was thinking like a Mister Misty from Dairy Queen. Like <laughs> that's about <laughs> it, though. <laughs> Everything else is game Everything on for sour else. cream. Yeah. Uh, but I and yeah, I like it. But beans without beans, like. I grew up with corn in my chili because my dad, there was a, ha- a rule in our household that every meal that could have corn would have corn. <laughs> <laughs> every meal that isn't dessert has corn in it. <laughs> so, yeah, I am I enjoy a good bowl of chili. I don't lose my mind over it, but I like it. How about you? I, I am in the same boat of like, yeah, it's fine. It's good. I'm not, I'm not going to go to a chili cook-off or like, like I'm not going to pound my chest on how good my chili Mm -hmm. is because my chili's fine i mean it's but every chili is just fine to me or it's either fine or it's bad like there's not there's not a middle ground for me and it's like i also don't care for i'm not the biggest bean fan in the world so like i like pinto beans and chili but not those big ugly red kidney beans i'm not into um or like Put a little on a hot dog. I'm fine with that too, or or on some nachos. But I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty lukewarm on my chili. Usually, when someone fucks up chili, it's because they got too cute with it. Yeah, it's like we, to I'm do not too using. Much. Yeah, like I have you know ch- strips of chicken meat and an Alfredo sauce mixed in. Well, what are we doing? Are we is this even <laughs> chili at this point? <laughs> I've had I've had good like white chicken chili, but that's like a totally different thing. That's not chili. Get yeah, out of here. That's a weird soup, which I probably could get down with. But yeah, I love weird soup. That's, I'm always saying that. Bring it to the company weird soup cook off, not the company chili cook off. Yeah, that's a different event, a significantly <laughs> different event. Well, I thought you were going to maybe mention this. Did I hear it right when uh, when they when they're going to the pulling in and parking at the chili cook off? Does Marge use the phrase "drunk as a poet on payday"? Yep, That's, absolutely. <laughs> that is a new one. <laughs> yep, I'm pretty into it. It's it's evocative. It does exactly what it needs to do. There's zero fat on that phrase. Uh, speaking of things I enjoy, uh, when they first get into the uh, chili cook-off area, the fact that Lenny <laughs> has a little bric-a-brac <laughs> yeah. sales setup a called little, a little bit of Lenny. <laughs> yeah, just a nice little arts and crafts place yeah. with some some knitted oven mitts mm-hmm. and and homemade spice racks. L- Lenny was embracing gig culture. 20 years before it was relevant. Look at him go. <laughs> yeah. And I love that, like, your mind can run wild. But, like, oh, Lenny's, like, going to craft fairs on the weekends yeah. and street fairs and flea markets. Look at him hustling before it was cool. I love that Marge goes to the spice rack and is like, eight spices. Certainly some of these are, are duplicates. <laughs> yep. And picks up a can of oregano and can't pronounce it. Yeah. Oregano? What is that? Yeah, I would like to see how many you uh, remove like the spices that might get used in baking, like for like the non baking spices in our household. Though it was a limited number, <laughs> salt and pepper. <laughs> yep, <laughs> maybe some seasoning salt if we're feeling frisky, <laughs> <laughs> which is just a different salt. Yep. <laughs> God, fucking white people. Am I right? <laughs> We grew up in an era, our ancestors came from an area where things don't grow. (laughs) So there was no cumin in the Arctic Circle. That's fair, yeah. (laughs) They found out quickly ground up reindeer antler didn't add anything to the gruel they were eating. (laughs) Yeah, so they were like, well, I guess we don't have spices. Yeah. (laughs) There's... I have overheard, like, an old man in this area complaining about too much black pepper. And so it's like, 
if black pepper can be too spicy for people in our area, (laughs) it amazes me that our city has Indian restaurants in it. Yeah. There's a few of us uh, brave patriots trying to trying to bend our midwestern palates yeah. <laughs> against their against their will. I was lucky enough to have like a mom who was an adventurous cooker who was Ooh. just like, "We're trying some new shit today." Good for you, because that was not how it was in our household. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just imagining you with your boiled skin on potatoes and boiled beef next Oof. to it. A lot of baked, but not baked with tin foil so like the that the skins aren't edible i just remember a lot of that as a kid just these thick skinned baked potatoes and mushing it with your fork and then yeah then no like, i was like 19 before i ever had sour cream that's probably why i love it so much it's the forbidden fruit you're making up for lost time now yeah. that's what you're doing yeah <laughs> uh, I do like, too, when uh, Homer shows up to, like, the kind of the area where the actual chili is and everyone's, like, in awe that he's there. And we get a quick glimpse of uh, Mr. Burns's chili chili booth. It's Yale-style saltpeter <laughs> chili. <laughs> Just so great. <laughs> yeah, that he would have uh, some fancied up chili at this thing is, uh, just is an- pretty funny endless run of good gigs in this little like five minute bit here uh because marge wants she's not a chili she's not about being a glutton she ends up in like kind of like the square dancing area or the line dancing area and the band playing is furl dixon in the second helping boys <laughs> it's so great <laughs> the second helping boys yeah. really got a hold of me like yeah. that that's we're gonna <laughs> rebrand the stand-up comedy oh. tour yep <laughs> Furl. That's that is such a good call for like an like an old timey country first name too. Yeah, like, Furl. I think there was, yeah, I think there was a Farron. I know there was a Farron back in like the fifties or sixties in country music. And then for- also we get Smithers, who apparently is fully embracing nineties country line dancing culture, which I mm-hmm. applaud. <laughs> Holy shit! This outfit of Smithers Dude, is. In my notes, I say if we ever this podcast ever catches on to the point we make a dime all of that money goes into buying you and i matching nudie suits yep i'm no, into it drops no expense spared how ridiculous would you and i look with a <laughs> bright white giant but then bedazzled just yeah obscenely bedazzled the yeah the the lessons that country music of the era learned from Elvis's jumpsuits were all the wrong lessons yep. and they're amazing. Like yeah, drop ten grand in 1971 on an ornately designed suit coat, but then not floss. Just that's that, that's yeah. too much. Yep, Br- brushing your teeth is for fancy boys from yep. the city. Now let <laughs> yeah. me strap on my ten thousand dollar fucking hillbilly disco suit an, an outfit that Cher would find too garish yeah yeah <laughs> no i can't liberace <laughs> and charo would turn their yeah. noses up at your white and hot pink with purple accents <laughs> rhinestone cowboy suit yeah. god they're so, so good oh i love god. that i love that smithers is lights up like he has yeah. a switch <laughs> So uh, he's going to teach Marge how to dance. Meanwhile, Homer is trying all the chilies. And again, he's the big man on campus. But uh, old pal Chief Wiggum, he's ready to ready to show Homer that he ain't all that to bacon chips because he has made some diabolical chili recipe that has some kind of forbidden peppers from Guatemala. Yeah, <laughs> some manner of imported devil peppers from yep. Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, during the first attempt, kick Homer's ass. Mm-hmm. He can't handle it, and everyone's mocking him. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> I love so before. D- just to rewind, just a minute. I love that before that he visits Ned's booth, who has five alarm chili, and he yeah. takes a spoonful of it, and yeah. he's like, "One, two. Wait a minute. This is only two alarm chili." And Ned is. Ruined. Ned is yeah. just head on the table, so ashamed of himself. 
himself, and one of the kids goes, Daddy, are you going to jail? So great. Holy yeah. fuck. Oh my god. Uh, and it's like the older boy, too, like who's obviously old enough to know better. <laughs> yeah, but he thinks that that yeah. his dad claiming that his chili is hotter than it actually is is a jailable offense. Yeah. Oh my god, I was dying. Yeah. <laughs> it was very uh, oh man yeah this was this might be my favorite at least laughs wise but i don't know man because now we're we're getting into the scene the episode takes a pretty abrupt change here so homer but uh, after accidentally dr- or not even accidentally drinking a lit candle on purpose <laughs> yeah. so that he coats his innards in wax goes back to Chief Wiggum's chili stand and devours those toxic chilies. Everyone is in awe of Homer's ability to eat that kind of stuff. And he you know, Homer's winning the day until he starts uh, tripping balls. <laughs> yeah, little hot pepper hallucinations. Yo, I, I love have. I love the like the style and motif and kind of everything around the culture of like desert peyote drug trip so i yeah. loved this episode oh, just from an just, a, just from an aesthetic standpoint i love that shit aesthetically so I, I, I totally can this. see it i just got bored there just was like because i just i get addicted to the laughs because when the laughs are on point it just it's one after the other so it just it bummed me out a little bit that that, that the laugh slow had to slow down for yeah, me yeah that's true i can see that completely and it got it just turned into like just a a fun visual but yes Mm -hmm. you're right the the jokes certainly uh that well that well slowed down quite a bit during a lot of this and i do like though that we do get a johnny cash appearance as i have in all caps (laughs) holy shit the coyote is johnny cash (laughs) this is right about when johnny cash was getting cool again or coolish at least this is like ish probably his second uh Rick Rubin album was coming out, so dude, Johnny Cash was coming back around, and the man was, comes around. I've heard, yeah, he does. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> Boom! That is, See, yeah. we got jokes. Look at us. That wasn't scripted, folks. That's off the top <laughs> of our n- noggins. <laughs> I meant to look this up beforehand, but I'm going to do it now. I do want to know where, like, what he was fucking doing at the time, because I genuinely don't know. In 97, what Johnny yeah. Cash was up to. That had been around the second Rick Rubin album. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was Unchained. The first one, I think, was just American Recordings. The second one was Unchained. Yeah, Third American was, 2 had come out yeah. to like th- two or three months before this. Oh, okay. Oh, look at this. This is his version of a press tour. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do the voice of a drug addled coyote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the fucking Today Show. I'm going to yeah. be on The Simpsons. Hey, on that subject, where you grew up in North Dakota, were they coyotes or were they coyotes? Coyotes. Like, yep. there was, there was, um, like, and I catch myself saying coyote every so often because I think that's the. Probably that's what the hear. more popular term is. Yep. Uh, that's the term you always hear on that's TV. A, city slickers. That's what <laughs> city folks, the, people that would be that are not used to coyotes would call them coyotes. Yeah, nah, they're, if, they're coyotes. Yeah, they're coyotes. And yeah. I, I feel the same way about Creek. It's, you know, where I'm from, it's Crick. But Creek is what everyone says on television. I think that's one of those words. I think I go 50 50. I'll mm. say crick, but I'll say it's because we have, we used to have a bar in town that was the Oak Creek Saloon. But yeah, oh, let's, it's down by, oh, I left my bike down by the crick. Yeah. So yeah. either, yeah, I can see either. I'll say creek if I'm in company where I don't want to sound like a fucking hillbilly in front yeah. of them. <laughs> I'm not about uh, it. I have noticed when I have to do Zoom meetings with non upper Midwesterners, oftentimes they'll comment that they can't sense that Fargo and accent. Something about the way I say the word root, the the tree's roots. Like, I don't think I say root, I say root. Oh, okay. I so always I, say I, root, so. Yeah, so and that's where my the, my inner hayseed comes out. <laughs> oh, look, look at them roots on that tree are out there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, roots on that <laughs> oh, tree that, by that, the that creek. That looks just like one of them octopuses I see on the TV. <laughs> 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 Anybody else hear that coyote? Yeah. Came Man, from over there by the creek. 
Uh, the coyotes around my parents' house are, if they ever join forces, they will take over and rule. Because <laughs> holy moly. There were nights this summer when the coyotes would be so loud. It's like, I am struggling to get to sleep because there are <laughs> hundreds of apex predators 15 feet away from this window right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, coyote ain't shit. You could fight a coyote and win for yeah. sure. Nah, not dozens of them, though. No, nah, but one-on-one, on one. if you oh, yeah. pulled one into the house, you could whoop it. Yeah, I'd somehow have to kind of devise a way to get them in one at a time. <laughs> Some kind of coyote corral. <laughs> so, I need to go to Lowe's and explain what my plan is for a weekend project. <laughs> See, what these you... coyotes, they got me feeling emasculated, but I think if I can get one in at a time, I can stop them to death in front of the old lady, and then she'll feel attraction for me again. <laughs> <laughs> Head out back to where they got all the lumber. Oh, you build the deck? No, I'm building a coyote trap. Explaining this to a 15 year old girl who started <laughs> earlier that day. <laughs> Well, you see, I recently have uh, had some self esteem issues regarding my dick neck, so I'm going to punch a coyote to death. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do it in front of my uh, living girlfriend or if I'm going to live stream it. <laughs> Sir, do you mean coyote? You know what? I can find what I need. Okay. I can, I can find one. Lag screws over here? Yeah, okay. I'm good. All right. We're, you run along now. <laughs> don't tell anybody I said dick neck. But well, the one thing the magic coyote does tell Homer is that he needs to find his soulmate. So after stumbling through the woods in a pepper-infused drug <laughs> stupor, <laughs> he is back at home. And he walks in to the kitchen that morning with uh, Bart and Lisa having breakfast. And they're having this, Bart's telling this story. It's like, so I says to Mabel, I says. And then he gets like interrupted by Homer. And then he starts like, so I says to Mabel. And I'm like... That just seems too fucking weird. <laughs> it doesn't like it's like what was going on there? Turns out it's just it's from a scene from The Great Gatsby. Oh, that's okay. It's, there's a yeah, like you know this show ha doesn't have to answer to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they can throw fucking Great Gatsby lines in there. So yeah, yeah. Good those for writers them. are I'm, just having fun at this point. I'm, I yeah, think. I'm glad that they. Don't have anyone telling them no. Sometimes it bites them in the ass, but more often than not, we get we get yeah. the fucking solid goal that we've been in lately. It's a net gain for sure when they're yeah. completely unbridled. And Marge does not believe that he didn't get wasted. She's very mad that he didn't come home and they're just not, again, Homer fudged up. And, well, he didn't really fall. I mean, you shouldn't eat peppers to the point of hallucinating, I guess, if you're a married man with children in the house. Fair. But at the same but, time, she just doesn't believe. He's telling her the truth, yeah. but she has reason not to believe him, you know, because this is a. I'm sure she has been fooled before and is mm -hmm. uh, and is not buying his what she assumes is bullshit this time around. Yep. And. He is kind of in a funk because he doesn't think Marge is the one. And he has dedicated his life to build, you know, he's built a life with Marge. So he's just listless, drifting, and he's trying to figure out what he, where his soulmate is. And he's reaching out to all sorts of, he ends up in an all night furniture store, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Yep. Late night furniture <laughs> buying is a world um, that I enjoy taking a peek into. There's been many a many a three a.m. I've wanted to update my ottoman, but I, I could not because <laughs> <laughs> the prudes and Ashley's only open from eight to ten. <laughs> yeah, uh, where am I supposed to buy a fresh fainting couch at mm -hmm. two in the morning? <laughs> you know, Marlon. Some people go like to Denny's after the bar. Nope, yeah, I need yeah. I need a new lamp, <laughs> need a new armoire. <laughs> <laughs> So Homer is again. She tries a bunch of different things. He decides that uh, that the man, or the person running the lighthouse, that they must be a lonely soul. Maybe they're Homer's soulmate, and he gets out there, ends up crushing the light, 
because he's losing his mind at this point. And uh, because the light is crushed, there's a there's a barge coming in by the, the our favorite sea captain is. <laughs> in, they're hauling in a, a big order of hot pants. <laughs> I love the idea of a shipping barge it's full of strictly hot pants. Hot pants. <laughs> And who should show up at Homer's darkest hour but then Marge? To, she, she figured out. She looked at the clues, and she knows Homer pretty damn well. So she figured out he'd be at the lighthouse, and they get back together. Uh, they, they aren't able to save the barge. It does crash, but, hey, that just means the good people of Springfield are loading up on on uh, hot pants. <laughs> and I do like, during this kind of Homer being sad scene, we get that... Is it Janice Ian or Ian? I don't know how she pronounces her last name. That uh, that seventeen song, like I learned the truth at seventeen. Oh yes, and love I do. Yeah, was meant for you. <laughs> Jesus, fuck, that'll get the party started. My God, <laughs> <laughs> all my years as a strip club DJ, I never once Holy spun shit, that, that one. Would be, Cause that song never picks up. It is nope. just depression, like about all the pretty girls getting everything they want she's just sitting there looking like a lump and just looks like a lump as a grown-up and just <laughs> can't find a male equivalent of these lumps to, to push up against oh my god life is cruel that song yeah you you wait for the drop in that song yeah. the whole yeah. time <laughs> Like, all right, Holy here we go. Shit. Nope. There needs to be a real heavy bass drop at the end. Like, let me clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> Glad I stuck with this one. <laughs> uh, you best believe I'm going to be looking for dubstep remixes of yeah. that, that song. <laughs> so Homer and Marge are back together. And yeah. There's free hot pants for everyone, so it's a pretty good ending. Springfield's doing all right. <laughs> yeah, they're doing just fine. And they all have hot pants. And I was happy to see that someone else besides Lisa can trip her ass off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the last we that, saw. That was a theme for like the probably around season four or five. We had like two or three episodes where Lisa's getting all fucked up. I had forgotten all about that. Mm. I really love that the song ends with short shorts from the yeah. Royal Teens. Like, that's of the two songs that were used in that episode. That was the one I was most happy about. Because that's, really that's a jaunty jam. <laughs> and I, you know me, I do have a weird love of, like, 50s and 60s pop and doo-wop yeah. songs. See, that's just, I don't know. That era, some of that stuff is just a little too corny for me to enjoy. Oh, sure. It's corny as fuck, a lot of it. But, man, do I love some of that malt shop music. Yeah. I I get what you what you mean, that uh, the jokes kind of take a break in that episode. But the, uh, man, do I love all that shit in the desert. Like, all the, the drug trip aesthetic. I think that's fantastic. And, man, was I hyped to see Johnny Cash in a fucking Simpsons <laughs> episode. I and was pretty into it. I don't want to have make you say anything incriminating have you dabbled much in hallucinogens you know i never have i've always like kind of glanced over at that window being like that looks kind of like they're having fun in there but like man my brain is i gotta keep a pretty tight leash on my mind yeah, as it man. is i don't need it going walk about I I think I, I I blew it. I blew my window. Like my twenties, I don't think my anxiety was. Well, I know it wasn't as brutal as it became in my thirties. So, I think there was a chance. I was just too much of a square back then. Mm -hmm. Now now that I'm fucking good time, Nathan, my brain doesn't want to play ball. So yeah, <laughs> now that you're now that you're cool, your brain isn't. So I'd be yeah, live and learn. You know, maybe maybe some maybe well into my forties. My mental health will, will correct it, correct its course, and I can start doing all sorts of dumb drugs. Or maybe you just wait until you're well into the your twilight years of your seventies and eighties, like in some retirement community. That's yeah. the t that's the time to do psychedelics because you or, got people watching out for you. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> psychedelics, that you know, everything, all the hard drugs you never had the balls to do, like you know, be eighty five years old, start. Fucking smoking angel dust, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> See how far you can throw a dumpster. You're never too old. <laughs> Nathan waits till well into his late 80s. To smoke a bunch of PCP and see yeah. if he can fight the nurses. Yeah, I like to see <laughs> somehow I get on one of the commercials for it. Like <laughs> I like to play badminton. I love the checkers games. I like to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> smoke it out of a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Rip a radiator out of the wall. <laughs> oh, today's Jello Day. We're excited. Yeah, you fucking squares, get out of here as you're just heating up a spoon. <laughs> he ate through a picket fence. <laughs> uh. Mr. Falsabach, put that defibrillator down as you're just shocking your balls with it. <laughs> Episode number 10 is the Springfield Files. Do you have any attachment to the X-Files? Nope. I think we may have tackled this early in the, in the podcast that... Because of when it aired, the mid-90s, you and I, because of where we lived, <laughs> did not have access no to the X-Files. Yeah. And I feel it's a show I really would have dug when I was young. I think so, too. I think... Uh, like, I like spooky stuff. I like the paranormal. Yeah, I like uh, I like spooky stuff, especially when it is also dipped in the science fiction world. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I think I I think and maybe I still would today, but I think I would have liked the X Files in my youth quite a bit, but was uh, never able to never able to check it out. And I could now, mm. you know, if I yep. if I were so inclined. Uh, I have often thought about, uh, even without watching the show, I've often thought about uh, checking out Kamel Nanjiani's X-Files podcast, which is apparently very good. And for what I am assuming would have been a good chunk of your college years, it was either TBS or TNT aired a big block of X-Files reruns in the middle of the night, because I always knew if I... If I stayed up past X Files reruns and Mama's family was starting up, I was it was morning. I was It was too no, late, yeah. It was morning now. Like, it's like, oh, this is not good. X Files is over. Oh God. I have class yeah, in the morning. It's that's Vicky Lawrence. That's never a good sign. <laughs> Vicky Lawrence is the herald of your yeah. impending uh, academic Th- suspension. Plum- plummeting grade point average. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Vicky Lawrence. Uh, one uh this episode for me started off on the right foot because it's all about like enjoying a Friday. And I'm gonna Yes. S- Go on record, best day of the week. I'll take a Friday over a Saturday. I've just something about a Friday. It's it's the last day of work, so even work is decent, and there's no pressure on a Friday evening. Saturdays, you got to have fun. It's like your one super fun free day. Yeah, and Friday also is uh, in my partying days was my preferred party night because like. You got all you got all weekend then. Like if you're mm-hmm. if you're gonna get up to some shit that you need to recover from, you got all weekend if you do it on Friday. Yep, I I love a, f- a Friday out, man. Yeah, and I just I like I miss like in school. You just knew, but in that afternoon, nothing heavy was gonna happen because it's the weekend. The teachers yeah. don't want to have to deal with that shit on Monday. So, and everyone's in a good mood because it's the end of the week. Yeah, I miss that. Like. Yeah, and I like I like them portraying everyone having the the fun Friday feelings at the at the front of this episode. My favorite of all of the examples they show being uh, Doctor Hibbert being like, "Oh, it's Friday," and leaves and leaves Hans Molman in the X ray booth. Yeah, so great. Who's just like, "Hello, <laughs> I I love Hans Molman yeah. so much." <laughs> you know who's a character I love? And he's he I don't think he maybe he has a name. He's like mustache, like a dark mustache and dark hair. He might be balding. I can't quite picture his hair, but he's always just a random customer service employee. Sometimes he's kind of snarky, but he shows up in this one. When there had, there's that Donkey Kong meet and greet. Oh, my God. The meet <laughs> Donkey Kong yeah. is so good. 
And the, he's the guy that's like, sorry, Donkey Kong, you're not the draw you once were. <laughs> that voice, I love it. It just pops up at the most random times. Like, he's got like a real, like, f- almost like 50s and 60s mm-hmm. uh, voice actor delivery yep, to like him D- that I really the like. The radio DJ in the early 60s or something, yeah. Yeah, and I love that he's, I think in this episode anyway, he works at the arcade because I think he yep. has the the coin machine on his belt. Yep. <laughs> and then we, holy shit, did I laugh at Millhouse playing the Waterworld arcade oh, game. That's my next note. 40 quarters is ins- so good. Insert 40. <laughs> quarters yeah. and he puts all of them in and then literally it's like okay go and he the kevin costner pixelated character takes one step and it's game over <laughs> and it asks for 40 more yeah. quarters <laughs> and then the cherry on top of that joke being that he starts digging yeah. in his pocket he's so going great. for it so great oh my oh, god man, did i yeah. love that <laughs> Uh, Homer spends his Friday of freedom uh, down at Moe's, getting hammered, drinking some, uh, is it red tick beer? Like it's, mm-hmm. oh, it's Friday. I gotta, I gotta do something special. Uh, Moe immediately tries to pawn off a duff by uh, drawing an umlaut on the label and saying, oh, it's doof. Like it's some <laughs> fancy beer. Uh, Homer immediately, no, that's just duff. See. I'm guessing you're young enough you didn't get to get in on the red beer phenomenon. There, uh, I know Red Dog. I was about they, to say Red Dog. Red Dog was something that I remember the older high schoolers drinking before I was a drinking high schooler. Does that make yeah. sense? So like I was I was in I remember the upperclassmen talking about it but was never able to partake. And like Red Dog too, it came out of nowhere. It went from not being a thing to being all over TV, and then all like, and it was like, it was slightly more expensive than like the slightly higher end domestic. So so it was like a twelve pack of that. I think was slightly more than a twelve pack of Bud Light. And was and, it any good? Was it worth a shit? Uh, I, I still no, to this I mean, day have it, never had it, and I think it's my, still around. Yep, if you ask me, I was like the idea of buying that when you could get a 30 pack of Bush Light was madness. And like they like yeah, the ads were always like again, super 90, so everything's edgy and like we're too Attitude. cool for everything. And they had like life lessons under the cap or just some kind of like fucking red dog wisdom, but then everyone's like, "Oh, this is fucking dumb." And within the blink of an eye, it became a shit box 30 pack beer <laughs> and that's why you saw it at high school parties because it got super reasonably priced oh okay that yeah. was what a fall from grace i do no re- shit like, i do remember the ads and kind of the the entire motif i remember thinking yeah. that like red dog beer was the no fear t-shirts of beer <laughs> yo yeah that you 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 your your line of thinking there's spot on I uh, I never partook, but I've definitely seen it today. I, I think mean, you not. still can. I think it's still in the cheap beer section with like I think the so too. Milwaukee's best and the Schmitz Keystone. I'm trying to think what's the bottom basement beer? Keystone. I would say Keystone. Yeah, Miller High Life could still be pretty damn cheap. The bushes, the bush, yeah, and that's that's usually like a sliver higher. Than those other, but it's still a, a very good deal. But yeah, Schmitz and Milwaukee's best and yeah. fucking beer 30. Holy shit. You're in for a bad time if you're getting a fucking <laughs> dirty 30 of beer 30. Hofta. The Natty Lights and the, oh, the, the old, natty the light. old yeah. Milwaukee's of the world. God. I, I used to know the t- price of a 12 pack of Natty Ice to the exact penny <laughs> at my <laughs> local, because I would often pay with pennies. So I needed to know that. Oh, those poor cashiers. Just me See, with a ice scraper flicking off frozen nickels off the floorboards of my buddy's pickup <laughs> truck. Like, <laughs> Jesus, man. So See, I, I needed a life coach or something. <laughs> I, in my, like, starting in my 20s, reached a point of, like, if I'm, like, if I'm balling on a pretty hardcore budget, like, I'm just buying 40s. I'm just buying malt liquor at some point rather than, like, 
I would rather spend $7 on two forties of Old English or King Cobra or Colt 45 than like 10 bucks on a 12th pack of shitty beer. See, and I, I can I can see that line of thinking. My thing was I was never a big fan of just the taste of malt liquor. Oh, and you're then, missing out. I didn't like how warm 40s would get. Well, you got to drink them faster, buddy. Yeah, but they're, yeah, they never go down fast. Yeah. They're not for sipping. You got to like, you're out to do work if you're buying 40s. Yeah. I did. yeah, I'm a, I'm I like the just a little like the, the the little individual cans just you know, burn them and turn them, you know, right <laughs> <laughs> in and out. <laughs> if, if I was trying to, you know, tie a dirty one on on a budget, I just forsook beer totally and was getting fucking 175s of Phillips vodka Oof. going going down that danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> Man, something about that Phillips label. Oof. Like, yep. You just see the label and you hurt. You're either in for a, on a fucking buck wild night or you're in for perhaps a life alteringly terrible <laughs> night. Like <laughs> nothing says I might go to jail like that Phillips vodka label. Yeah, then taking pulls off a room temp Phillips vodka. Ugh. Yeah, you, you crack it open and you rip that little stopper out of there because you ain't. Who's got time for that? Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Homer's drinking red tick beer down at Moe's and uh, <laughs> gets, we later learn, gets 10 of them in them. So that's Homer's, uh, that's Homer's line. I love that we get a brief glimpse of the brewing process of red tick beer, which is just a huge bat of beer, of a uh, huge bat of beer. God damn it. Which <laughs> a huge vat of beer with uh, dogs swimming in it, and, yeah. the, and the testers <laughs> like, hmm, no, needs more dogs. Uh, Homer walks home uh, drunkenly and gets lost in the spooky woods. Uh, runs into Abe Simpson, who uh, who got lost, and uh, Homer leaves him there, and. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it runs into what he assumes is an extraterrestrial with glowing with big eyes and talking about peace and love. And uh, Homer goes running off uh, and no one believes him. Wouldn't you know it? Because yeah. it's Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that Lisa references Junior Skeptic Magazine. <laughs> yeah, so great. <laughs> and how uh, that magazine says that the odds of running into an extraterrestrial are pretty <laughs> astronomical. I love that that is on Lisa's list of reading that she yeah. does. Junior <laughs> Skeptic. Perfect for a buzzkill like Lisa. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um. He, he goes to the cops, and I love Wiggum mocking Homer, being like, oh, sure, you saw an alien. Let me type up a report on my invisible <laughs> typewriter. I love how childish Chief Wiggum yeah. is. Straight to Homer's dumb face. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, word eventually gets back to the FBI, and we got David Duchovny, and is it Gillian or Jillian? I always forget. Uh, I'm guessing Jillian, but I, who knows? Uh, they, uh, Mulder and Scully from the X-Files. There's a joke. I might be stepping on your toes here, but it's when uh, Mulder and Scully are at Moe's, and... All of a sudden, Mo gets the get, you know finds out they're FBI and he's very nervous, <laughs> and it's him going into the back room to holler at those two guys that are sponging down a killer whale. <laughs> the noises that killer whale makes crack me up so goddamn much. I love seeing like the seedy underbelly of Mo Slizlak, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. what kind of shit <laughs> he gets into when he's not bartending. Oh, so great. The Jesus. fact that he and his cronies have kidnapped a killer whale from SeaWorld. Yeah. <laughs> and I assume not for some noble environmental no, no, reason. No, I'm is... sure it's to sell that whale. Yeah. Profit There's... based. There's a ransom letter at SeaWorld for that yeah. whale, no doubt. <laughs> I love that in the in the course of the X-Files people trying to get to the bottom of this alien sighting, uh, they take Homer in for a police lineup. And they're like, are any of these the alien that you saw? And it's all like TV aliens, including the Simpson alien. 
Yeah. <laughs> and Elf and Chewbacca yeah. and uh, Marvin the Martian. And I didn't recognize the robot. I think it's from the day the Earth stood still. Okay. Yeah, it, it looks like kind of that that style of sci-fi robot. But yeah, I, I just love that they have that scene of him being like, no, it's none of them. And that one of them has literally abducted Homer Simpson in the past. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm assuming that those were all uh, Treehouse of Horrors, is, which uh, aren't, aren't canon. So... And now they'll be haunted by a real live ghost. <laughs> uh, Homer, uh, Bart, Bart believes Homer, finally. Bart is like, yeah, I, I believe you, Dad. Uh, and so they go out uh, with a ton of stolen camping equipment that is all stamped <laughs> with property of Ned Flanders. Yeah. <laughs> they go out camping because they're going to they're gonna see this, uh, this alien. Uh, we get a weird, I had fucking forgotten completely about this this cultural touchstone we get a we get a vision of the budweiser frogs oh but yep a brief appearance from them and it's like holy shit had i forgotten that was a real thing but that was one of those things i suppose much like the simpsons that was fucking everywhere oh yeah mid to late 90s bud light advertising was just relentless yeah Fucking t-shirts and billboards and god damn it, those three frogs. I think that was yeah. one of those like Budweiser Super Bowl ads that then took off and was everywhere for the next two fucking years. They uh so they've stolen all of Ned's camping gear and they're out camping waiting for the alien and it shows up uh, <laughs> and they scare it off, but Bart has caught the whole thing on tape. Uh, they send it into the news, and Kent Brockman reports on it, and they go the next Friday, because this happens on Fridays, is when the alien shows up. The whole <laughs> town is out there. There's people selling t-shirts, there's food vendors, they've turned it into a, a community event, everyone waiting for this alien to show up. And as soon as it does, as they're prone to do, Springfield mobs the fuck up immediately. <laughs> There's torches and pitchforks. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Smithers comes to the rescue. He jumps in there. Turns out the alien is actually Mr. Burns. Because on Fridays he gets, uh, and and this is all explained by Smithers, he gets uh, chiropractic readjustments. This is all to help fight <laughs> off the aging process. He is filled with painkillers, which is where he gets his, uh, his lovey-dovey speech and his... Uh, his kind of ethereal uh, uh, speech <laughs> patterns. Yeah, those giant pupils. And those huge dilated pupils. <laughs> and he's glowing due to working in a power plant for all those years. This must have been around the time of Fox airing that alien autopsy show. Oh, I don't know what that is. I think it was just kind of like a a ratings grab that they like they claimed they had like 1940s footage of an autopsy on one of the aliens from Roswell and I mean really? they did not and I mean I think it was a ratings hit to their credit and they did not like they they sold it as an actual scientific experiment it was all a sham but <laughs> boy they they were Blair Witch in it before Blair Witch in was cool was this a Capone's vault situation yep except it was f staged so they didn't just have to look at a hamper full of dirty socks and just shrug their shoulders like, well <laughs> can't win them all <laughs> god the fucking capone's vault the, about twice a year i'll watch that just to be like ah geraldo you fucking nut job yeah and still out there doing it too well, somehow still employable yeah <laughs> but it turns out that uh there is no alien. It is just Mr. Burns, his uh, his weekly rejuvenation process. Which uh, I'm, I applaud. Yeah, this was a fun one. You know, I could give a shit about the X Files and and Mulder and Scully's appearance mm -hmm. in this, but it was it was still good. It was still made for a good episode, and I love the the Leonard Nimoy interstitials we get throughout this episode, as if he's hosting some sci fi television show. That yeah. <laughs> it gave the whole thing kind of a Treehouse of Horror vibe. Oh, totally. I even wrote. I was like, I haven't experienced a good spooky night, like you know, where it's like. You're somewhere rural and the sun's setting. You're like, I haven't felt the spooky feeling in a while. I kind of miss it. Yeah, go out there and get spooked. 
You can yeah. just do that. Yeah, they frown upon it in cities, though. Just middle-aged men hiding under people's trees and jumping out and scaring <laughs> themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe maybe don't do it that way, but... Yeah, <laughs> no promises. So we are up to episode 11. The yes, twisted... if that was a question mark. Yeah, 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 I didn't really commit to either tone enough there. I'm going to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> This is the twisted world of Marge Simpson. So Marge is in, a, in like a lady investor group with uh, with the preacher's wife, with Mrs. Flanders, with Skinner's mom. Who's the fourth? Oh, did I say Mrs. Krabappel? You didn't, but she's in there as well as yep. uh, Luann, not Millhouse, Luann Von Towton, whatever, whatever her name is. Yeah. <laughs> So let's see. And and they, Marge, as one would expect with Marge, is very reticent to take any kind of risk with the investments. So the the rest of them kind of unceremoniously just, nope, you're out of the group. Yeah, kick her right out of the group because she's not down with high-risk investments. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm guessing with Marge, too, it's just that's just her nature. You know, she's... Yeah, Marge gonna, isn't. She could win the lottery. She'd stay in the same house the rest of her life. Exactly, and never spend a dime of it. Like Marge is, Marge is not one for high risk investing. I guess. So they end up. Marge kind of feels slighted by all this. So they ends up dragging the family to kind of this kind of like I'd say like a job expo. Is that how you would describe yeah, it? Yeah, like they call it a franchise fair here, and maybe that's a thing. Uh, this. Yeah. Hate to shock you, but this isn't really my world that we're yeah. dealing in. <laughs> and all of it screams like a scam. Yeah. Because why they have to show up in a high school gymnasium and set up a, you know, like a PowerPoint presentation to convince you to start a business. Hey, man, if it's a good business, you don't got it. They don't got to do that. Burger King doesn't have to beg people <laughs> to open Burger Kings. Yeah, you They're can just makers. you can just buy a Domino's franchise. Yeah, you don't need yeah. to go to a thing. Exactly. Yeah, you don't have to do fucking trust falls. You can just buy the Domino's. <laughs> like, it's, it's all you, man. <laughs> Listen, if you're saying that we should pool our money and buy a Domino's, I'm with yeah. you. <laughs> So holy shit, yeah. I played poker next to a guy that used to run a domino. It was like or he ran several of them like in Upper Wisconsin. And he said the price point for breadsticks, it's something absurd. Like the ingredients and the box that gets delivered in comes to something like 90 cents. Oof. For or no, 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 no. I'm told I added a zero. I think it's like nine cents. <laughs> and and he said that's why the if you ever see a promotion, it always involves breadsticks because breadsticks cost us nothing. He said breadsticks are a giveaway food. Yeah, but if but, you if you order them on their own, they're like six ninety nine. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. sure their profit margin on breadsticks is enormous. You you can't get that profit margin with street drugs. That's, <laughs> think of that once. Like, it's outrageous how big of a profit margin that is. <laughs> also, I assume that that's why whenever one of these pizza chains is like, try our new such and such, it's always just some variant on breadsticks. Like, mm -hmm. try our mm -hmm. new our new butter garlic knots. That's just yep. a breadstick that you tied up. You drizzled something on. Yeah, exactly. So I'm assuming, I've always assumed that, like, whenever it's like, try our new bread nuggets, it's like, yeah, somebody somewhere in a kitchen fucked up a crust and did this to it, and now it's a product. Yeah. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> you want me to spend seven ninety nine on yeah. one of your employees' <laughs> fuck-up? And I fall for it every time. <laughs> I'm always like, I do need to try the garlic butter bread knots. Yeah. You're right, Domino's. <laughs> and every I time, I'm like, this is just a refurbished fucking yeah. breadstick. <laughs> God damn it. I fell for it again. Uh, why would I want to... Stuffed crust, crust stuffed with trout. <laughs> this is not a good combination. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to like P 
pizza chain gimmicks, I am a fucking <laughs> idiot. Like, yeah. you can sell me anything. Just, yeah, just right off the turnip truck in the big city. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will part with any amount of money for literally any product that comes with marinara dipping sauce. Yeah. Like, I see that <laughs> cup of red sauce, and I'm like, fucking take all of this cash. That's, what... What in the, how many of this pile of money do you need to give me more of that? <laughs> yeah. And then after the fact, I'm always like, wait, this is just muddy shoelaces. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Not again. Well, I guess I'll I dip guess. it in the marinara sauce. <laughs> Live and learn, and I never <laughs> learn. <laughs> so Marge can't really find her fit for any of these products or like investment ideas or business startups until she meets a kindly old man running a uh, a pretzel wagon yeah and it's voiced by the delightful jack lemon yeah i right away was like oh that's jack lemon mm-hmm. perfect yeah we lost a lot when we lost jack lemon he's a we national did. treasure if you ask me uh and without jack lemon i mean we would have the stage play but uh the movie glenn gary glenn ross has some a- amazing Jack he is, Lemon in it. He is a vital ingredient in that yep. film. He's G- Shelly. That movie's He's the so machine. fucking good. Oh, that that's one of those movies that I enjoy so much I envy my friends that, ha- that haven't seen it and they get to watch it for the first time. Yeah. Oh, Pacino in that, uh, the Alec Baldwin speech. Yeah. I could do without I, Kevin Spacey, but I don't really like Kevin Spacey in anything. Oh. See, I like Kevin Spacey in that. He plays that beaten down character well. And there's like, will you go to lunch? <laughs> I, I quote that movie so much to people that don't <laughs> recognize the quote, but I, st- I won't quit. <laughs> uh, Ed Harris. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. Ed Harris. Ed Harris. Is that movie's bad. fucking good. Yeah. And then uh, as it, Alan Arkin plays kind of the dim witted. Yeah, kind of I like, believe that's Alan Arkin. Yeah, that whole cast is good. Get them to sign on the line that is dotted. <laughs> the leads are weak. You're weak. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Yep. I, oh, I talk about if any of my friends ever have a job that has anything to do with real estate, I will bombard their Facebook account with comments about the leads until they have to delete me or remove me as a friend because I will ruin yeah. Worth it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I really like this project you're getting involved with, uh, but these leads are <laughs> shit. I want the good leads, the Glen Gary leads. <laughs> Second oh. prize, a set of steak knives. Third <laughs> yeah. prize, you're fired. You're fired, yeah. Holy shit, that is so good. <laughs> We can't we can't just quote all of Glen Gary Glen Ross yeah. for the rest of the episode. Oh. We can't do it, Nathan. Yeah. I just had a weird pang that I don't have often because I usually don't regret it. But like it's times like this, like, why did I sell my DVD collection? I'd like to pop that in right now. Or, or I mean, after the podcast is <laughs> over. <laughs> I just drift off. You hear me like cheering on that movie. <laughs> yeah, you get here, those leads, Jelly. <laughs> I'm sitting here recapping the next episode, just tossing yeah. you softball jokes. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah. Yeah. So that sounds good, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Nathan. Are you watching Glenn Gary Glenn Ross? You don't even have your headphones on anymore. Yeah. <laughs> then it just switches to me playing Nintendo. <laughs> That's clearly the Legend of Zelda music. <laughs> God damn it. I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> So Marge is getting into the exciting world of owning a pretzel wagon while the investorettes have gotten into a falafel van. Have you, do you remember, were you in town at this point? You might not have been. The like 2004 to 2006 PETA takeover of the Fargo-Moorhead area. Mm. Were you around for that when all of and, a sudden there was... We went from zero pita, fa- like fast food pita restaurants, to like a dozen, all and, at simultaneously. And just, I have very few experience, like extreme p- f- uh, extreme pita, pita explosion, pita you know, pit, pita avalanche. There was, you're right, there was like, 
I clearly remember getting a gift card from my job to one of those and going in like, oh, you know, I love a good Euro. And they had a Euro. Like, hey, this is going to be awesome. And they're just the most dopey looking employees. It's just as <laughs> remarkable. There must be some kind of hiring strategy. There's all these slumped over dopes. And I'm like, uh, order, I, I'll just take a Euro. Like, okay, no onions, please. Like, okay. And I'm like, uh, well, what kind of sauce do you want? And I'm like, well, I want like tzatziki sauce. It's like, I don't think we have that. Like, well, like a cucumber sauce. It's like, well, like, I don't think so. Like, well, I'm like, it's white. Is there anything white? Like, we have guacamole. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not a good substitute for yeah, tzatziki. I, and I'm like, oh, I guess, man, if that's all your options are. <laughs> so I just I took like four bites out of it and just threw, threw it away. Like, this is a trash store <laughs> full of fucking walking fucking bunions. Like, just these, oh, I, I could just picture, like, everything was rounded. Like, just these little, like, like... Like, I'm trying to think, like, the, almost like Lego people. <laughs> like, <laughs> their little shitty pita hats on. Uh, uh, as you get, this did not end in a very good Yelp review for this place. <laughs> and thankfully, they're almost all out of business because they yeah. were so terrible. And thankfully, the good pita type places, like the good Mediterranean restaurants, are still succeeding. That's the thing. Like, we have good Mediterranean restaurants in this yeah. town. So luckily, they, luckily they survived the onslaught of of like fast food pitas but it, they were fucking it just yeah, overnight. It's really, that's a good point yeah and i don't know if this is like i don't know if this is a thing in other cities or even other cities our size but when something like that happens i've seen it happen multiple times where it's like Okay, in for, uh, after the pita thing, then it was sushi restaurants. There was Dude, there was insanity. one place to get sushi, and then suddenly there were a dozen places to get yep. sushi. And then I watched it happen again with Froyo a few years after that. There was one place of the like self serve and put all the toppings on and pay by the pound froyo joint and then there were a dozen of them i don't know if that's a strictly fargo thing but that's how it happens here froyo the concept just i don't get it at all like Man, there's Dairy Queens everywhere, bro. <laughs> Fucking blizzards. Blizzards are pretty tight. I love is the it, I love the midwesternness of that attitude. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, there's but, already Dairy Queen. Why would yep. we have another or, place for frozen treats? You know what we do have in this community? We got a pretty baller ass fucking tasty freeze. Uh huh. Not a lot of those, tasted, but we got one of them. Yep. And if if that's where you should be getting your ice cream treats, is that tasty freeze? Yeah, it looks like it's some days. I think that that tasty freeze has somehow angered God that all these calamities <laughs> happen. Like all these tasty freezes getting flooded. I don't think they have a frame or like a base. They should be buoyant. <laughs> like you should be able, you should be able to like fjord a. <laughs> like, you should be able to cross a river in a tasty freeze. Like <laughs> yeah, it's. They're, it, it's great and it's like out of the way so you have yeah, to really want it to get there dicey, and then, and then dicey you're, trailer park and then you're constantly reading about and boy howdy are we on some fucking local shit right now but mm-hmm. like you're always reading some man there's never a good story about the tasty freeze in the nope. newspaper it's always like mm-hmm. they're barely holding on and then they got locusts yep. but there's mm-hmm. somehow the community needs to come together and save the yet, tasty freeze yet another mount lion attack at the local <laughs> tasty freeze and the tasty freeze i love you know you got a good ice cream set up when it's only certain times of the year. The Tasty Freeze is yeah. probably April 1st to like November 1st. And I remember going to like a late afternoon movie on like a Wednesday with a buddy of mine. And it was like, yeah, sometime in early, mid April. And it was sort of like a late season blizzard. And I mean, it was snowing hard because we had plans of getting a, 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 a Tasty Freeze treat after the movie. And like, they can't be open. I mean, like there was <laughs> snow drifting pretty heavily. Like it's like to the point we didn't feel super comfortable driving in it. It's like, well, God damn it, we got to see. 
we pull up and it's now it's getting dark and I'm like holy fuck the neon lights are on <laughs> and there is a, there is a snow drift I am not shitting you that goes right to the countertop of where you would rest your <laughs> arms to order and we trudging through snow in our huge basketball shorts because we're morbidly overweight we don't wear pants <laughs> and I peer through the darkness and the blinding snow to see two tiny goth girls like huddling around the <laughs> fucking crock pot full of sloppy joes for heat and they were like shocked to st- I think they had come to terms that they were gonna die in a tasty freeze tomb but they're like like what are you doing I was like we ca- I kind of want a cone if I can and, and stunned disbelief they made us ice cream treats <laughs> They might have died that night. I never did. <laughs> <laughs> but if they had that tasty freeze, would stay open. It would be yep, just they, another. It'd be another I sad story in the newspaper and the continuation of the tasty freeze. I guarantee there's at least fifteen shallow graves around that tasty freeze. <laughs> You know how many transients work in the in the seasonal ice cream business? <laughs> <laughs> there is no next of kin from your average Tasty Freeze employee. <laughs> they they are here to make sure the community gets their ice cream, and yeah. <laughs> they will they will fight off a pack of wolves to serve you a cone. Yeah. Uh, you got to eat it outdoor. I don't think there's a. I don't think indoor tasty freezes exist. No, I think they're all like a. They look like those drive up coffee shacks that are yep, just. A, yep, totally. Wh- whatever they. I think those are all just repurposed photo huts from the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just gonna yeah. You got to eat it in the elements. That's part of the that's part of the agreement with the tasty freeze. Some level of bugs are gonna yeah. be involved. The swirl cone just tastes better if you had to fight a coyote to yeah. get there. Yeah, and the prices are always so reasonable. So yeah, check out Google it. You might be a drive, but it, I am not even exaggerating. Driving to a tasty freeze is worth a three hour round trip. Oh, like, for sure. Just to, why not go check out a tasty freeze? Take your picture in front of it. It looks cool. Be like, I'll be damned. Look at this relic that is somehow still here. (laughs) So Marge is now in the pretzel game. Her enemies are in the pita game. And uh, what's your pretzel stance, Marlon? While we're talking about chili stance, what's your pretzel stance? I fucking love pretzels. Fascinating. Give me... And all the way from top to bottom of the pretzel genre, I am 100% on board. I like a big, Ooh. soft pretzel. I like... I really like, if you made me choose a favorite, the, like, break-your-teeth sourdough pretzel. I really? really fucking love. No kidding. You give me twists and sticks and rods, uh, a pretzel bun for a sand. Anything with the word pretzel in it, I am. I will take. Uh, I don't know if it's. I don't know how hot this take is, but I will take a bag of pretzels over a bag of potato chips literally any day of the week. Wow, that is that's a hot take. I am, I'm gonna get my hot take. I'm gonna get my rolled gold cock rocker tattoo any yeah. day now. <laughs> See, I am, I am, I am an enthu- I'm, I'm, I'm a chili enthusiast compared to my level of apathy towards pretzels. Really? Certainly don't dislike them, but I bet I could count on one hand how many times I've ever purchased pretzels. Man, do you have like a? A preferred pretzel, even if you're apathetic Dots. on the whole genre. Dots. You, oh man, like the, that's that's the one that I maybe can't get behind is a dots oh, pretzel. See, there's one flavor of dots pretzels that I like. And a big doughy pretzel with like cheese dipping sauce. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh yeah. I, I certainly don't dislike it, but I just it's something I wouldn't order. Like there's other there's other like bad for you starches that I enjoy more <laughs> than a big fat pretzel, but but yeah, again I am not anti pretzel, but it just like I've never been in a gas station and seen a bag of roll golds and like a bag of potato chips and went roll gold like it's man, gonna be. That's you know, I I mean everyone lived their life, but man, I can't imagine taking a, a potato chip over a pretzel. No, well, the and like again regional, extremely local shit. Uh, Dots pretzels 
you know are a thing up here but they're just they're just pretzel sticks with some manner of seasoning on them and i don't care yeah. for the seasoning Oh, see, that's that's what does it for me is it, it spices it up just enough. It gets, gets me a little intrigued. Just on the same way, though, uh, the idea of just snacking on a p- bag of like classic Lay's potato chips is ridiculous to me. Sure. Yeah. Like, like re- regular potato chips exist as a vehicle for dip. That's yep. that's the mm-hmm. only reason you buy non like flavored potato chips. Like, I used to see that, like, you know, I used to work in a big call center where there'd be, you know, there's, like, a big, like, you know, snack machine area. And I would see people getting just a plain bag of Lay's and sitting at their cubicle and putting one plain Lay's in their mouth at a time. It's like, have you ever once experienced joy? (laughs) Have you ever once reached out of your comfort zone? You see all those fucking flavors there? They're all there for the take. And they're the same price, even. (laughs) Why not? That, Why not live? All that sour cream and onion flavoring is free. It's a bonus. Take it. Mm. Live your life. Reach for that black bag of barbecue. Oh, That's the barbecue is my thing. Yep. Mine too. Sour, sour cream and onion is an example of one of the things in my life where as a child I loved and as an adult I don't dislike. But I used to, if I was a little kid and I had to get a bag of potato chips, it was sour cream and onion. I It's been 25 years since that's even crossed my mind to <laughs> or order a bit, get a bag of sour cream and onion. I'm pretty much barbecue if I'm like if I'm at like a Jimmy John's and I have to get a bag of chips, it's going to be barbecue. I'm in the same boat, but I will uh, I will occasionally get a sour cream and onion hankering. Ooh, you know it's the one I get a hankering for, and it's very brand specific. Old Dutch dill pickle. I'm not a built. To, I'm not a dill pickle chips guy. Oh man, I can. I get it. It's a. It's a, a acquired taste. But man, if it's Old Dutch, other brands fall far short. But God, Old Dutch dill pickle might be my favorite potato chip. Oh, I I love dill pickles, and I like. I don't like any dill pickled flavored thing that's out there. Yeah, it's. I can uh, see not that. my jam. Because it often gets messed up. Like. And it's everywhere. I feel like I see dill pickle flavored everything right now. Like oh, really? chips and sunflower seeds. Like you go oh, into a gas yeah. station, you can't swing a dead cat in a convenience store without hitting dill pickle flavored something. Yeah. I you now you say that 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 does that that, that adds up. How did we get so, here? Oh yeah, I'm just gonna say Pretzels. rewind. So we have Marge's pretzels in one quarter. The Investorettes, uh, Pita Van in the other. And Marge is trying to, you know, think of different ideas to drum up business. She goes to Homer's place of work only to be, you know, met there by the Pita Van. And the Pita Van's way fancier and they get all the business. And Marge decides to do a uh, free pretzel at the ball game night. But uh, <laughs> they end up uh, getting thrown at the opposing team's manager. Oh, no. So no, 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 no. They get thrown at Mr. Burns after he wins a 1997 Pontiac Astro <laughs> wagon. Oh, but no, doesn't a manager come up and plead with them to stop throwing? And then oh, he yes. Becomes like, yeah, that comes he gets like knocked unconscious. Yeah. You're, cor- <laughs> you're correct. They knock yeah. him out with pretzels. <laughs> and it's somebody real, too. I can't remember which, who, it's like an actual, like, former major league, like, from the 50s. I can't yeah, think of the was, name, though. It's it was someone. I didn't write like it Duke down. Duke Snyder or, or something like that. Whitey someone. <laughs> Whitey, yeah. Was it Whitey Ford? Would he have been alive? <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. But yeah, yeah. They, you're right. They do <laughs> assault the manager with pretzels. So Marge is just everything Marge plans. It just doesn't work out. And she's getting real, real close to throwing in the apron. And uh, Homer, you know, he's trying. He wants Marge to succeed and lists the help of Fat Tony and his uh, organized <laughs> crime associates. So they do all they really push the limits of what would be acceptable to help a pretzel business go <laughs> off the ground <laughs> they really uh clean the competitors out of springfield <laughs> yeah. and so marge is actually doing well and she's so excited about this uh you know all of a sudden you know the pita people they just can't catch a break and meanwhile marge is just making pretzels hand over fist and then it all kind of comes crashing down when she is confronted by Fat Tony and he's demanding money for their services. And, of course, Homer <laughs> has to let him know that he fucked up <laughs> and they have no clue what to do to get them that money. 
And as the mafia does, they, they come to collect early that morning. The best part of this episode is the fact that the PETA people show up and they have the Yakuza with them. Yep. <laughs> Such a great joke premise like, that they would bring their own like specifically ethnic mafia. Their <laughs> own. The Italian yeah. versus the. Yeah. <laughs> their own ethnic crime syndicate. Yeah. And, and this epic fight breaks up. And the thing like Homer watching the guy that's not doing anything is like, but Marge, I just know he's going to do something. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> which is absolutely from martial arts movies because like yeah. like the calm little guy mm. who never does anything the whole movie always fucking whoops ass in the third act and they're in the house and there's just complete pandemonium outside and the kids come out and they're like half asleep like like mom what's going on it's just a mob war go back to sleep honey <laughs> it's such a good line <laughs> like it's just oh. another day in the simpson household yeah. one thing worth commenting on uh, Grandpa Simpson's really in a bad way in this batch of episodes. He's like <laughs> either just wandering through the woods or wandering through town. Like he yeah. needs full time home care. Like, yeah, someone needs to be keeping an eye on on Abe yeah. Simpson during <laughs> these episodes. Yeah. So that's just kind of how it ends. The mobs are duking it out, and we assume Marge is now out of the pretzel game. Yeah. Like, they just kind of end that with the mob war yeah. going on outside and them sitting at the table just like, well, I guess that's that. <laughs> Such a great Simpson ending. The yep. There's a joke earlier on when Marge is really discouraged about how her pretzel business is going. And earlier in the episode, she had hung that, that hang in there kitten mm -hmm. poster. Holy shit. And she's looking so at it. So good. And she goes, she looks at the bottom line and is like, copyright 1968. Well, determined or not, that cat is long dead. <laughs> Holy <laughs> what shit. A fucking depressing thing to think of. <laughs> yeah, to see this like hang in there, baby kitten poster. Oh, and, man. And then being like, oh, that cat is for sure dead because this was yeah. made in 68. <laughs> Holy shit. Did I laugh at that? Oh, God. Yeah. Good episode. I enjoyed that one. Yep, yeah, solid. That brings us to episode 12 of season 8, which is Mountain of Madness. We get a, uh, a fire drill at the power plant where uh, Burns, just to put a little zip in his day, needs to put the employees to some manner of test. So he uh, <laughs> has a fire drill, and they do not, they, yeah. don't, they don't do well in the fire drill. No, no, like... Oh, just line up and leave in an orderly fashion. <laughs> yeah. Like, they kind of destroy the place. It takes yeah. over 15 minutes for one of them to get out. <laughs> so good. So great. And have you worked at many businesses in your life that are big enough to have uh, fire drills? No, I don't think I've had a fire drill since I was probably in high school. No kidding. Fast. I've had a few work for bigger companies that have all sorts of you know protocols so i've i've had a few adult fire drills i just thought that is something that if my dad saw me doing he would think less of me like, <laughs> i bet in like the average small town man's head it's just like you're a grown-ass man what you don't need to practice getting out of a place that's on fire right <laughs> just just go yeah just leave the why just is there a drill for this what? You're not six. You're going you to panic and actually run into it? No, just go out the door. I, uh, I'm i trying to think back to former careers I've had and thinking of how funny a fire drill might have been while working at the strip club. Like yeah, yeah. that would have you almost could have stood to use it because the lighting at strip clubs is so disorientating. It's like an arcade or a casino. Yeah, yeah. It also doesn't help that I'm usually borderline alcohol poisoning whenever I'm inside one. That's the thing. Like a fire drill at the strip club is just people who are too drunk to walk, stumbling yeah. out onto the sidewalk, followed by topless women just people hammered with their tits out trying yep. to escape a, a non-burning <laughs> exactly. building just for so, funsies 
It would be something straight out of like an 80s comedy. Yes, absolutely. Like you could yeah. see that you could see that scene happening in like a straight to video bachelor party sequel. Yeah, like Hot Dog 4. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so you have if you obviously have never done a uh, a fire drill as an adult, you haven't got to take part in the new phenomenon that is an active shooter drill. I have not. Well, I have, have you? had a two different places I've worked at we had I think my the first of the two it was like right before I quit they we did our first ever active shooter drill and then yeah my last job my last office job we I think once a year we'd have to do an online test and then we would do an active shooter drill during the day some point in time like jeez so I yeah. had I had one job that had like a series like okay you're hired now watch these like half a dozen 10 minute safety videos and one of them was a uh, was an active shooter video mm-hmm. but that's as close as i've had to come i've never had to i've never had to pretend i was going to die at work yep and it just seems like why you know what i'm strapped we're all strapped just scream thug life and dump a clip <laughs> that's that's all the active shooter drill i need is <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what I learned from that video. They said exactly that was yeah. <laughs> scream thug life and dump a clip. It was a nine second video. Yeah. These tutorials are getting real to the point. I was like, okay, yeah. This, well, is, adds up. this is North Dakota. We're all armed. Yeah. Uh, so Burns decides that they need a lesson in teamwork and uh uh, decides they're going to have a corporate retreat up at a, uh, a mountain that has a ski lodge. and Well, maybe not a ski lodge, but a ski lift anyway. We'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're going to have a corporate retreat where they learn about teamwork. And Homer, I, I, when this happened in the episode, I thought, that's a weird thing to do. Homer brings his family to this <laughs> to this teamwork event for that he has to attend for work. Yeah. Uh, and then... Burns pretty immediately is like, Homer, did you bring your family to this? <laughs> so I was glad to see so I was great. on the same page. Yeah. And I don't want I don't want to backtrack too much, but there was a scene I just died during the fire alarm from fire drill where Homer's in his little workstation mm-hmm. and he's looking at what he should save. I like the pictures of his children and his wife and all of them together. He ends up saving that picture of him, like the old timey <laughs> cowboy picture. Yeah. And I got to ask, did the Wells household have a picture of little Marlin in old timey Old West cowboy garb? Absolutely Because that was not. definitely a thing. Really? I cannot imagine a world where our family would have gone to something like that. Because like... Oh. Like that just screams like oh come it it screams like tourist attraction like stop it old timey West World you got to remember f- that that was just my life we didn't have to go anywhere to See, be I around forget- old cowboy shit I forget your county fair didn't have anything enjoyable at it so like, right I was just say that was a thing at our county fair you could get that like. It'd just be like, here, take this, put this giant cowboy hat on. And I don't, they would put a background that had like tumbleweeds. <laughs> yeah, that was just life. I already, yeah. I already had a cowboy hat and was surrounded by tumbleweeds. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> when was the last time you unironically wore a cowboy hat? Oh, man. I feel like I'd have shrugged that off in probably. I'm going to say 12 years old. Oh, okay. Maybe 10. I might have I might have started my rebellion a little early. Uh, <laughs> but it has it was certainly around then. And that's one thing that's I mean there were some kids and like and people in their 20s even that were into rodeo that would sometimes wear a cowboy hat out on the town but it was so rare like to see right. like the guys that work cattle none of them wore cowboy hats which i'm assuming is not the case where you're from oh my my old man wore a cowboy hat always like it was it would have been it would have been it, the the handful of times i saw it it was bizarre to see my dad not wearing a cowboy hat 
Like he he didn't just like he wouldn't wear the hat, like a like a bait like you know like the the hat they give you at the elevator or the seed shop or you know like he would occasionally wear a you know some manner of ball cap probably from from an elevator uh, yeah. to like that was like a very specific event hat not fancy enough to where he's gonna wear his fancy cowboy hat but not dingy enough that he's gonna wear his everyday cowboy hat he had two cowboy hats one for going out and one for every day i figured because cowboy hats can get expensive like oh for sure you spend a lot of money on a fucking cowboy hat cowboy boots as well boots also yeah and buckles cow for for being such you know dirt farmer salt of the earth people Cowboys spend a lot on those three things. Yeah. Boots, hat, just and buckle. Very, yeah. So were Wrangler Pro Rodeo jeans a big part of the uh, sartorial choices made in your area? I certainly saw a lot of Wranglers uh, everywhere I went. But as a, uh, as a husky young gent, I think, uh, I think Wranglers fell out of my purview fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were for the more of the stovepipe types, yeah, stovepipe legs, you know. Like. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, Jinkos hit just at the right time. <laughs> Hide your burgeoning hips. <laughs> <laughs> And on a amorphous denim blob. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, my dad saw saw the transformation and it <laughs> of me going for taking off my cowboy hat and putting on a Lakers ball cap, and then taking off my boots for Reeboks and taking off my Wranglers for Jinkos, like, and taking off my button-down Garth Brooks album cover cowboy shirt yep. and replacing it with some manner of button-down flaming dragon shirt. Yeah, for, and he, oh, fuck he, yeah. He had to... So he saw, oh, this isn't he's not like me coming from a mile away (laughs) the metamorphosis from from rodeo to juggalo (laughs) you have have emerged from your pupa (laughs) and you're screaming get me some grease paint when you go to Dickinson (laughs) holy fuck oh I got to get jugged up. <laughs> Do you know that some tiny North Dakota school, there was a kid sitting alone on the stage at a high school dance in full juggalo face paint. Oh, for sure. That absolutely had to have happened. <laughs> that so had to have happened. <laughs> I, yeah. man, oh, my God. <laughs> I, if... If Rodeo to Juggalo doesn't end up being my autobiography, (laughs) oh, shit. Uh, At least a chapter title. (laughs) That must have been the hardest, most heartbreaking butterfly transformation (laughs) for him to watch. Yeah. (laughs) And I don't regret a thing. Fuck that. Yeah, I I just got to say, you got to let that... Jenko flag fly. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let your Carl Kanai flag fly. <laughs> I uh, I discovered Insane Clown Posse and David Bowie at about the same time and became a different <laughs> person overnight. Both distressing to a Midwestern father, but for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. Uh, uh. Uh, that was a real one-two punch, I'm sure. <laughs> I just, yeah. I'm all, if, I'm curious if he and mom ever had conversations about like I don't know about the boy. I don't uh, <laughs> I understand what's happening. I think my dad had just given up hope on me at such a young age that like <laughs> just me just blankly staring at a wall when I'm supposed to be helping him with something at like age seven. Like he just knew it's like this is. He is never, this is not going to work out. <laughs> I just hope he's not like, they, I know my mom really started setting the bar low 
early on for me, which I think was just a coping mechanism for her. <laughs> like, it's just like, like, <laughs> I'm like the family holiday letter. It's like, well, Nathan's not an arsonist. So <laughs> that's, that's really great. That's which, really, which really I, proud of him. <laughs> which I suspect was not true. You were just hiding your arson yeah. pretty well. I kind of got out of the fire bug thing at a fairly young age. <laughs> I mean, it's always bubbling under the surface. But. Yeah. <laughs> you barely keeping a lid on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Jekyll and Hyde duality of man is Nathan yeah. fighting his inherent firebug tendencies. <laughs> Uh, we get to see, I love when we get to see this and we haven't seen it in a long while, but Maggie in her snowsuit just being star shaped is I had the that same funniest note. fucking thing to me. Love it. Oh my God. Cause that's how kids look when they're all bundled up and they yep. can't move. They just look like giant starfish and it's like a cruddy action up. figure. Like they have, <laughs> they, they have very few points of motion. Yeah. Very <laughs> few points of articulation. <laughs> There not, you go. Yeah. You can't pose a kid <laughs> yeah. in a snowsuit very well. Oh man, I, lo- I miss being that age when like it was warm enough to go outside, but there were still tons of snow. Man, yeah, good times. I never had those times because if you were going out in the snow, it was to work. So, like, I longed for. I never understood the 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 snow days of let's go build a snowman. Uh, and we oh, and, and we weren't snowmobile people like so many people up here. So, oh, fascinating! Yeah, yeah. We yeah, that was more of a teenage or preteen thing, but yeah, we always had an old sled around a horse around with. But oh man, God, yeah, many a many a delightful delightful afternoon was spent with like my cousins just being complete maniacs out in the backyard in the in the snow. Until eventually some kid got, would get hit in the face with a chunk of ice and then all things would have to come to a stop and the, have to uh, find out who was the culprit. <laughs> the extent of our uh, like snow recreation would have been like the old man tying the calf sled to the back of the, of the four-wheeler and seeing if he can kill you. Like that's oh, about as far as we ever went. back. The fact that me and my neither me or my brother suffered a severe neck injury from that, but except for us, it was getting pulled behind the snowmobile. So many times he'd get spinning so fast that the sled, the toboggan, would be ahead of the snowmobile. <laughs> that has tragedy written all over it. And then finally, he'd realize that and he'd crank it the other way. So it would pull you enough to jar your teeth loose <laughs> because you'd be the centrifugal force of it. It's like funny. None of us had an aneurysm or something like that. Like <laughs> Dad's thing was... Uh, to tie a long rope to the calf sled and he would drive the four wheeler and you'd be in the sled. And I don't know, I don't know if you know what a calf sled is, but it's like, like real heavy plastic and real high sides. And then a, a turned up nose in front. They're like, they're impossible to fall out of, which also makes them impossible to bail out of if you're about to die. <laughs> so, yeah. and the and the plastic is like three quarters of an inch thick. I think they're bulletproof. And yeah. <laughs> he would pull that behind the four wheeler, going way too fast. And then, rather than tie the rope to the four wheeler, he would just hold it or put it around his waist. That way, if he came up to the riverbank that had a forty foot drop off, he could just let go of the rope and turn out of the way and let you go like i think he, i think he was actively trying to get rid of me a lot of times i think dads are really good at that level of horseplay because yeah because they had no supervision themselves so they got good at it right <laughs> Like, I can't remember if it was my dad or my uncle. I remember watching one of them. I don't know, one of them bought a three wheeler, and they're both fucking around on it. And I remember, I think it was my dad or my uncle. Yeah, we rode a wheelie for a, close to three city blocks <laughs> while holding a beer and a lit cigarette. Uh, that's the, that's a that's <laughs> pretty major dad energy. Yeah, yeah. That, they do not teach young dads that anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. 
Young dads are are built of a different cloth now, for yeah. sure. They rarely have an open container in the vehicle with their children around. No one is hot boxing Marlboros anymore. <laughs> the amount of secondhand smoke I have inhaled from ages infancy to ten was alarming. Like that's the thing. Like, like it. Like dad energy now is socks with sandals mowing the lawn and barbecues dad energy back then was drinking and horseplay and some manner of tobacco use and just bursts of violence yeah i mean yeah that too it's like just a placid zero to 60 emotional (laughs) turns at all times a lot of short fuses where i came from yeah like like a fun afternoon of putting together the Christmas tree ends in just a violent <laughs> rage. There's a Christmas tree sticking through the wall. <laughs> the, to me, the epitome of dad energy is a crying child trying to hold the flashlight correctly. Yep. <laughs> because you're supposed to be able to guess which size socket. <laughs> Uh, when I when I hear the word dad, I'm immediately transported to holding the flashlight wrong. <laughs> yeah, like I, I lo- that's what I love too. Like, how should I know what what are you even looking at? What? <laughs> why would I know what needs to be illuminated? Like, think of that. In no other line of work would that be an assumption you can make about nope. an employee. No. Nope. <laughs> insanity <laughs> uh, doing every doing anything with your dad would be an hr violation in any you know, place of employment oh my well i got to experience that because later in life i went to go work with my dad at his day job i was a part-time summer help and i got to watch how he treated people that weren't birthed but from his loins uh, he treats them with respect i was about to say it was significantly better am i right <laughs> like i forgot that that guy could smile now and then <laughs> <laughs> which is very alarming to me oh. <laughs> But there were times when something would get goofed up or not done properly, and he would start hollering at me. And then I, I, then he would realize, oh, he was working on something else, and whoever did that thing would speak up. And then it was just, hey, no big deal. It's, ah, you know, these like, things happen. Yeah, these things happen. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, as a, as the son, have to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these things do happen. What yeah. is your deal with me? Boy. But we remember this for future times. Ah, <laughs> uh, good times. Yeah. By our tone of our voices, you can yeah. tell it's very pleasantly reminiscing. <laughs> we we are somehow fine. Not Especially, great, but fine. And then, and then the prevalence of metric sockets became bigger. <laughs> so all of a sudden, there's... You have a fucking, your chance of getting it wrong is way increased. Yeah, we threw a lot more wrongs into the pile now, (laughs) so. (laughs) Holy shit, yeah. Madness. (laughs) I remember going to work with other kids doing like some kind of farm project or something like, and you'd be around their dads. It's not a rule that dads have to be lunatics and flip <laughs> out about everything. It's like some people aren't that way. I remember thinking it was like a revelation to me. It's like, oh, he's the issue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, granted, I'm fucking everything up. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just daydreaming about like, I wonder if like He-Man and Skeletor were friends. <laughs> what would happen then? Like, like it's, it's just like they'd be like timeshare Castle Great Skull. What's... What would be the thing then? <laughs> I'm 17. <laughs> Where's Manny Faces fall into this? Yeah. Oh, man. I always thought Manny Faces was so lame. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. I just, just yeah. choose a side. <laughs> Go <with> backbone. <laughs> Fair. I won't even argue that. And also, his head was too big, so it made it hard to do wrestling moves on him. <laughs> and as, as we've discussed before, that's the sign of a good action figure when you can accurately have wrestling matches. <laughs> when you can do a suplex, <laughs> like a, a traditional like arm over the head, yeah, pull him straight suplex, in the air, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so Burns decides that they're going to have a, uh, a uh, survival race to a, from where they start to a cabin out in the snowy woods. And they're, uh, they're, it's to build teamwork. They're going to be separated into teams of two. And Burns is with Homer. So they're a team of two. And Smithers is kind of left out in the cold. He doesn't get a teammate. <laughs> and so all of these te- great. <laughs> all of these teams of two are going to race to the cabin and the last team to get there is fired in kind of a Glengarry Glen Ross situation. Yes, very much so. Uh, but Homer is in Homer's fine because he's with Mr. Burns and obviously Mr. Burns isn't going to get fired. Uh, in the meantime, the kids and Marge are at the ranger station being bored out of their minds by how boring the ranger station is. <laughs> Uh, we even the ranger even earlier in the episode mentions that like they're because of budget cuts they're not allowed to have anything fun anymore (laughs) which i thought was great yeah bart and lisa they kind of duck off and they join smithers so they're with smithers this whole time while marge uh is with maggie and the ranger and they end up having to go look for them but that's down the road uh burns and homer burns unveils from the bushes a snowmobile and they're just going to cheat and go be the first ones to the cabin. (laughs) Um, So they get up there, they get to the top, they're enjoying sandwiches and they're having champagne and uh, they cause an avalanche which buries the cabin. And then they, uh, they finally get tunneled out of the cabin and immediately cause like uh, there's like a dozen avalanches. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is a very a very silly episode when we when when you think about physics. But the, yeah. so the cabin is buried. <laughs> yeah, they'd be running out of oxygen pretty quick in there. Yeah, <laughs> this is real life. And then uh, the like the most most of the rest of this episode turns into the film the lighthouse where they're just stuck in this cabin slowly losing their minds yeah <laughs> they uh they build snowmen in the cabin and then take off all their clothes to dress the snowmen and like <laughs> i love that their descent into madness is just uh is conveyed by like Burns's hair getting crazier and Homer looking more bug eyed. I love when we show Homer having like quote unquote wild hair. It's just his two hairs become like zigzaggy instead of perfectly curved. I love that that's how they portray that with the animation. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, they get cabin fever. In the meantime, everyone else, like Lenny and Carl, get to where the cabin is on the map, but it's not there because it's buried under an avalanche. Uh, They and everyone else ends up getting to, like, a lookout cabin that the rangers have and finding out, wait, this isn't the right cabin. Uh, They start gearing up to go go look for uh, Burns and Homer in... And about at the same time, Burns and Homer uh, are having a fight. Burns has a fire poker. They've lost all. Of, they've lost their minds and are trying <laughs> to kill each other. All connection to the outside world. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, <laughs> they turned pretty quickly. Like the cabin yeah. fever madness set in pretty quickly. <laughs> in the process of them fighting, Burns punctures the propane tank, which turns the house into a rocket. Uh, there's just. uh, like flaming propane jet going out one way and it propels the cabin up out of the snow and down the hill towards the ranger station uh they eventually uh come to a complete stop and uh and and kind of just step out and burns is like hey we all learned about teamwork right and that's kind of the end of the episode yeah (laughs) a very silly one which uh i have zero troubles with yeah, I agree. And plenty of good burns. Like Burns losing his shit the whole time is pretty funny. Yeah, I knew I knew this would be up your alley with because we get we get two scoops of burns in this one. Yeah. So we're up to episode 13, our final episode for this batch. It is Sing It With Me, Simpson Califragilistic XP Annoyed Grunt Oceus. Yeah, I would call that good. I was like, I did it. When, when I saw this episode and looked at the order, I was like, okay, I don't have to be the one to say this yep. title. Good. You lucky duck. But hey, <laughs> I rose to the occasion. 
uh, this episode. We we get the Simpson family at peak shit bag. Even like Lisa, and like all of them except Marge, just can't take care of themselves. They're just lazy. But a lot of it's enabling Marge. When Bart needs milk, let Bart go get his own milk. Yeah, he's grown boy. Like I feel, a lot of parents I have feel themselves ba- to blame. I feel bad for Marge, but at the same time, she's kind of built this this firehouse that she's in herself. So, yep. Man, I had friends like that growing up. Mom, make me a sandwich. Mom, come. It's like you are seventeen years old, dude. Like. <laughs> I cannot imagine that world. Yeah. Like, yeah, my mom was, yeah. Make your own goddamn sandwich. Get your own milk. None of these things are hard, and they are all things you need to know to survive. Yep, I think that exactly. when I come across, like, a man who can't cook, I'm like, how did you, what happened? How do you not know how to care for yourself? Yeah. Same with a man who doesn't know how to do laundry. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. That Because it, it's not hard. Unless, like, you know, you're... <laughs> trying to do your own dry cleaning you know <laughs> like, yeah uh, you're not getting fancy with it but you, yeah. you know you can figure out how to get the funk out of your t-shirts come on yeah yeah you're right there are some man babies out there that and there's women that fall for the man babies it's just a Ugh. codependency thing like yeah well ain't good just say no to man babies, ladies. <laughs> Nothing good about it, you ladies. Yeah, that's right. So, Nathan can do his own laundry, ladies. Yeah, look at that, huh? I can cook very rudimentary meals. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they're watching the crusty comedy classic spelled with all K's. So he is yeah. on stage at the Apollo with the letters K K K behind yeah. him. That's a <laughs> Great joke. Yeah. I love the uh the like nervous, crusty, like groan, like oh uh, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. you know something's not going well. <laughs> uh, when he does that fucking mad about shoe parody, oh he's just like, ah, they're not gonna like the next one. <laughs> the, the NYPD shoe. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the same joke. God do I oh, love that. Yeah. Crusty bombing is my favorite crusty. Yo. <laughs> he doesn't translate to the adult audience well. No. So the Simpsons, everyone has just become truly just total bums to the point Marge is falling apart at the seams. <laughs> almost literally. Her hair now has like holes in it. Like you can look through the holes in Marge's hair. So she is shedding up a storm, which is not ideal when... You know, 60% of your height is hair. That's right. A, it's, a, it's a big part of your personality. <laughs> when, when Lisa's like, Mom, there's a hair in my soup, and it, it's blue and six feet long, and she pull, yeah. pulls it out of the bowl. Oh, it's so gross. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> and do they meet with, like, a therapist who decides that Marge should get a nanny? Is that what... What leads to it? Uh, Marge goes to Dr. Hibbert about losing her hair, and he diagnoses it as being stress-related. So mm. I think it's I think it's Marge herself comes to the conclusion that getting a nanny is is what they ought to do. Yep, she needs a break. They there's a great scene where Mar or Homer he thinks everybody is Mrs. Doubtfire, so he's like, <laughs> he's trying to unmask middle aged women who are not wearing wearing a mask. Yeah, every nanny that comes to the door to interview yeah. he assumes <laughs> is Mrs. Doubtfire. So you think that movie lot. holds up? I have literally never seen it. Really? Yep. It's uh, I, you know, it's, I, I remember it being good not like life-changing or anything but i remember it being funny yeah i wonder if uh i wonder if that's still the case well robin williams and sally field that's a good combo they're both super talented and robin williams is just like fucking chewing scenery like he's pretty full robin williams in that yeah which sometimes i like but i do like the occasional understated robin williams role like like one hour photo and stuff like that. Like Yeah, or the teacher one. Oh yeah, Goodwill Hunting. That's the one. Or <laughs> the yeah. teacher one. 
But it could also be Dead Poet Society. <laughs> oh, yes. Actually, I think that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. So. <laughs> so they try out a bunch. I do like how one of the bullies was going to be <laughs> try uh, yeah. out for the nanny position. The bald headed one. Yeah. <laughs> Who we found out last week is a father. Yeah. Which I like to think all these, every joke in The Simpsons that isn't tree, from a Treehouse of Horror episode is 100% canon to me. So, yeah. yes, he has a child. Yeah. Ned has a bomb shelter, you know, yeah. like all of these things remain true forever for me. So, it well, they finally they're they're kind of at their wits end. They can't find anybody to be a nanny for their dysfunctional family. But lo and behold, who descends from the heavens? It's not Mary Poppins. <laughs> it, Do you have the, the actual name? Yeah, it's Sherry Bobbins, who Sherry they Bobbins. who they are quick to point out yeah. is not Mary Poppins. Yeah, so that I, that part cracked me up like. <laughs> Don't need to get into that legal battle. Yeah, which, again, is funny to look back on now whenever they make Disney jokes, because here we are. Disney <laughs> Disney owns The Simpsons. Yeah, they own like a third of everything you've ever Most consumed things. media-wise. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if Disney were to come to my home, they could legally lay claim to most of my things. So she uh, descends from the sky, just like a certain unnamed Disney character, and <laughs> is a literal miracle worker. Just like every little thing that could go wrong, she fixes. It's just endless. Like she ends it. She teaches Bart and Lisa, and it's just yeah. I love couldn't the, ask for anything better. I love that her like first thing is like teaching the kids how to clean their room, but it's like cut every corner i think is the name of the song she yeah. sings and it's just like <laughs> yeah just stuff that shit under the bed and in the closet who gives yeah. a fuck is the, is the mantra of the song pulling your blankets over a pile of toys is so good <laughs> yeah like that doesn't mean the room is clean as somebody who's yeah. fairly clean that whole song scene was terrifying like no this isn't cleaning yeah and then it just never ends. Every everything they can throw at her, she can handle it. It seems like, but it just seems to like she thinks she has them one over, but no. Like the bad habits are always just bubbling right underneath the surface, and eventually she just kind of gets like burnt out. Like I think she sees the writing on the wall that the Simpsons are a lost cause, and then uh, there is a great scene where she she's in Moe's bar, which I think is so wonderful. <laughs> And we get a great, we, we find out that her and Barney have gotten to know each other because that comes in later when she's leaving and everyone's saying goodbye. And Barney comes into the scene at the last second and goes, so long, Superman, which is so great. <laughs> so, so great. <laughs> uh, I love the Barney moment earlier when she's she's singing some song, a lot of songs in this fucking episode. I I, I didn't care for this one at all. But nope, I, I not don't, a bit. The, the, I don't care for Mary Poppins or Disney style musicals like this. I've never so. seen Mary Poppins. It never, even as a kid, I would have thought this was hokey. Mm -hmm. It just does nothing for me. And like they, and, they try to Simpsonize Mary Poppins, you know, as as best they can. But in the yeah. end, I still don't much care for this. But I do love, uh, like the song that they have at Moe's, the like give me a beer song that Barney and Mo sing in the snow globe with Barney laying out in the gutter, begging for money for more booze. <laughs> I did find that so pretty good. amusing. Yeah. I like his singing voice too. That, that was the one part of the songs I enjoyed was his <laughs> pitch perfect singing voice. I like that. They run into uh, groundskeeper Willie at the park who apparently also on the side like is a one man band for money trying to be mm -hmm. a street performer of sorts and it turns out that they were engaged at some point <laughs> that's great <laughs> do we maybe see the one man band apparatus in an earlier season episode oh i don't know i if we did i, was I don't thinking remember maybe we did 
But yeah, I love that that Willie is doing some one man band shit and doing yeah. <laughs> doing Maniac from Flashdance. And his one man band apparatus has like a water bucket that he dumps on himself for his big finale. <laughs> oh god, yeah. And it, yeah, I just wish there was there was more of a hook. You saw the hook coming a million miles away. Oh, she's the perfect nanny, but the Simpsons. How they is she break gonna handle her? Them? Imagine that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's just a tired gag. Yeah, this is definitely the weakest we've had in a while. Like, yeah. I do love we get, I think, maybe my favorite itchy and scratchy moment, at least favorite f- of recent memory, uh, where they do Reservoir Cats, guest directed by Quentin Tarantino, and they mm-hmm. do the, the Reservoir Dogs stuck in the middle with you scene. And then Tar- yeah. like a cartoon Tarantino pops in just being like, uh, see, it's a commentary on how violence is all around us, and, and Itchy <laughs> just cuts his head off. Yeah, I, was, I got a I kick was out like, of that. All right, that's fun. <laughs> you won me back, Itchy. But yeah, this one is just kind of a dud. Like, the, I think uh, Barney's so long Superman line is the only one that really made me laugh. In <laughs> it this was one. very funny when he yeah. so long Superman not getting that that Barney just because she flies doesn't mean she's Superman. And then I also got a good laugh because she is immediately sucked into a jet engine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because like, it just seems like everything's going to be fun, but you just have that sneaking suspicion. Something's going to happen. Yeah. She- Something's going to happen. You know, just like just unceremoniously just <laughs> evaporated by an intake. Yeah. <laughs> just a jet woof, engine. And yeah. she's gone. <laughs> That was pretty good. <laughs> and I did like her hanging out at Moe's, too. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, I just thought all around it was like an incredibly simple story padded out to fit 22 mm-hmm. minutes. There, was not, there wasn't 22 minutes of non-singing content in this episode. So they just filled it out with songs, and it's not... It, it wasn't my style. I, I was not into this, like, at this- all. It's almost had the feeling of like a season one or a season two episode where it's like, can you believe these people? Look how they act. That's, you know, it's like we get it. Like the Simpsons is better when they're more human than less human. So, like, yeah, yeah. but that and like, who am I to say? Just not caring for Mary Poppins to begin with. Didn't, mm-hmm. you know, this was uh, the deck was stacked against this episode from the get go for me. So yep. uh, like as soon as I saw that title, I was like, oh, man, who are we really going to yeah. do? Really? Is this? Yeah. Uh, why are we doing this? Yeah. But she did get sucked into that jet engine and I did get a laugh out of that. So <laughs> yeah, like it's not a, the, the episode isn't without value here and there, but it's pretty light pretty just a sprinkling of things i actually liked in this one which as we've said before when everything is pretty top shelf simpsons right now makes it stick out all the more yeah exactly like there'll be times you know six months from now an episode like this will not stick out as being not very good it'll probably stick out as being above average which yeah maybe a little trepidation say in that sentence (laughs) (laughs) didn't feel good did it yeah no it sure didn't (laughs) But that does it. That's another batch yeah. of the I, Simpsons. I wish there was more to say about that episode. Yeah, just... I feel weird just, like, moving on, but that's kind of mm-hmm. it, you know? No. Like, oh, this nanny came in to clean up the Simpsons, but they got the better of her, you know? Like, yeah. Those Simpsons. they're so wacky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. But we did it. We did. We uh, we wrapped up another episode or of America's Barley Basket. Five more in the bank. Uh, we have uh, five more coming up. We have uh, 14 through 18. Our, uh, from season eight is the, uh, the next batch that we will do next week. Uh, not a lot else going on in the world. I don't know if... I don't know how mm. you are feeling these days, but I am like... I'm starting to get bored. Yeah. Oh, dude, the winter, the COVID Roro winter doldrums of really. Yeah. Like, I'm like just counting the days until March. <laughs> Not that March is always the answer, but at least you know you're in the in, in the back nine. There's like, at least light at the end of the tunnel come March where it's like, we're all right. probably not going to, yeah. Winter won't last forever. Yep. The days, you know, eventually hit daylight savings. That really makes the days last longer, so. 
come on, March. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> it's we're just getting through it, getting through the seasonal affective disorders. You can follow us on all the social meds, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Barley Basket USA. You can email the show Barley Basket USA at gmail.com. Enjoy the basketballs and the seasonal affective disorders. And uh, we will watch more Simpsons 14 through 18 next week. See ya. Bye.